Welcome back to Dark Corners Streaming. I want this case. In 1973, Christopher Lee appeared in two films in which an English policeman goes to a Scottish island inquiring after a little girl. I want to report a missing child. The Wicker Man has become a horror classic, while Nothing But The Night, which you can find on YouTube, is now largely ignored. It's not a forgotten classic, certainly not the equal of its illustrious sibling, but it's overdue for reappraisal. Opening with a series of mysterious deaths, the film introduces detective Colonel Bingham and his pathologist friend Sir Mark Ashby. This is Colonel Bingham. The joy of seeing Lee and Peter Cushing together is redoubled by seeing the old friends play old friends with endearing ease. Find out what you can. Please. You have to wonder if that reflects their own friendship, and the back and forths between the pair show the film at its most natural. Suppose the last surviving trustee inherits all the money. The killings are too blatant. The film also boasts the profusion of recognisable faces that British pictures of this era can so effortlessly muster, including Diana Dawes... I was on the game, wasn't I? That and the ten years in Broadmoor. ...and a young Michael Gambon. I have a theory about the sabotage, sir. There's also a powerful debut performance from Gwyneth Strong. Wind and change the flame spread so quickly. Who would find fame some 15 years later as Cassandra in sitcom Only Fools and Horses. Strong's Mary Valley is the child around whom the various intertwining mysteries spiral. The clues leading to the remote children's home where she lives. The fire. My body's burning. Based on John Blackburn's novel, the film was the sole production of Lee's own company, Charlemagne, formed with Hammer producer Anthony Nelson Keyes. And in his biography, Lee said that it had failed because it was ahead of its time. But you're using your legal rights as trustees of Mary to deny a basic flesh and blood relationship. There may be some truth in that. Certainly a more recent horror hit has had a similar premise, but I can't talk about it without ruining both films. That said, I do think there are other reasons the film failed. Director Peter Sasti had made some interesting films for Hammer, including Taste the Blood of Dracula, but was more experienced in television, as was writer Brian Hales, and this has an overwhelmingly televisual feel. It's very talky. Why the hell wasn't I told about it? It's only just been reported, sir, just before we arrived. It cuts into three half-hour episodes, complete with cliffhangers, really easily. Did no one realise the danger these children were in? And, above all, it has this diffuse sprawl of characters to follow, with no one really feeling like the lead. As though you're a totally different person. It also holds onto its secrets too tightly, drip-feeding little to keep us interested, and, crucially, not giving us a red herring plot to follow, an area in which the Wicker Man excels. But it's no ordinary murder. The supernatural element, when it comes, is fascinating, but the film does not build to it adequately, either in content or atmosphere. I've never done a story on the occult before. It's all hocus-pocus mumbo-jumbo. I've always believed in hard facts. Which is a shame, because one of the reasons I'm tiptoeing about this is that it's got a really good ending. Points to one thing. Ritual murder. Overall, Nothing But The Night is less than the sum of its parts. There's a lot that's good, but they just failed to nail the whole. Which, again, is a shame, because even with its similarities to The Wicker Man, I think it's different enough to be its own thing. Although, for what it's worth, I think I'd rather see it as a miniseries than a movie. It just has that feel. Thanks for watching. Have you seen Nothing But The Night? What do you think of it, and where do you rank it in the canon of Lee and Cushing films? Let us know in the comments below.